Good morning, class. We're going to ta start talking about solving trigonometric equations. Now, to solve three equations, we have to talk about some algebra stuff and some basic identities. Now, the basic identities that we're going to be using, I'm referring to this purple paper. These identities that we did practice a while back, and we should still have memorized, but we will always have that purple paper in front of us in case we need to review stuff, especially these Pythagorean ones. Cosine squared plus sine squared equal to 1, and then from there we'll talk about how to, we will review how to derive all the rest. Okay? So, how do you solve trig equations? Standard algebra techniques including factoring, and we have to isolate the trig function on one side of the equation. So you do not need to copy this down. I will have this page uploaded on Schoology so that you can look at it and use it as reference. So I want to go through an example. It's already worked out. Again, you do not have to copy it down. If I ask you to solve this equation, find the value of x that will satisfy this equation. I could divide both sides by 2, and I'm trying to get the sine function alone. And then I have to ask myself, when is the sine equal to 1 half? Knowing that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and is positive. Because it's positive, the sine I know is positive in quadrant 1, and quadrant 2. So I could draw a triangle in quadrant 1, I could draw a triangle in quadrant 2. Calculating those values, knowing the sign is opposite over hypotenuse, that is a 30 degree angle, and in quadrant 2, opposite of hypotenuse. That is only the reference angle of 30. The actual angle is 150. So that's where I'm getting these angles from. In radian mode, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. So this equation has two answers, two angles that will satisfy that equation. Now, we also know that the sine can be one half at a whole bunch of other angles. And I'll ask you to pause real quick, take out your calculator, and verify that. Take the sine of 390 degrees, the sine of 510, sine of 750 degrees, sine of 870, they all give you one half. Now, I could come up with a whole I could come up with more angles that will give you one half. And I'm going to ask you to identify every angle that will give you one half. Now, how do we do that? Hmm. There's two things. If we are in degree mode, if you are in radian mode, if you are in degree mode, that angle of 30, I could go all the way around one revolution to generate the other angle. I'll go around twice, or three times, four times. If I'm at 150 degrees, I could go around 360 more than once. These are the angles in radian measure. Instead of adding 360, I'm adding 2 pi. I'm adding 2 pi. And one quick note, I hope you're already writing it down. I hope you're already thinking about it. This will only work when the n is an integer. So we need to make sure we include that and we include that. So there will be times when we ask you to find every single angle. There will be times when we only ask you to find certain angles. And if you're asked to find all the angles, then we give these equations. If we're asking to find an ang the angles in a given interval, then we only give those angles in the given interval. And we'll talk about that right now. So 
I will have this page uploaded on Schoology. You can look at it and use it for your reference. Now let's start working on some examples. So these I will ask you to write down because we're going to need to practice some of these together. Here goes number one. 3 sine of x minus rad 3 equals sine of x. I need to solve for the x. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. I need to subtract the sine to this side. It'll give me 2 sine of x. I'm going to add rad 3 to the right. This is some algebra. I need to solve. So I'm going to divide by 2. So now at this point, I need to pause and think about this. The sine of x is equal to rad 3 over 2. When is the sine positive rad 3 over 2? Because the sine is a positive rad 3 over 2, I could be in quadrant 1. And I also know that the sine is also positive in quadrant 2. So in quadrant 1, do a little triangle. The sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. That's rad 3. That's 2. I recognize this angle. It's a special angle. A special angle is 60. Converting it to radian measure, and I know the x should equal pi over 3. If I'm in quadrant 2 now, again, little triangle in quadrant 2, the opposite is rad 3. I recognize the reference angle. The reference angle here is 60, but that's not the angle that I want. The actual angle is that. So if the reference angle is 60, the actual angle is 120. And knowing that I have 120 tells me that the 120 degrees, the specific degrees, the actual angle is 2 pi over 3. Now, these angles are going to work, but if I go back and read the direction clearly, carefully, it tells me to find all values, all of this. So, this is not all of them, that's only two of them, but I know that if I add 2 pi n to that angle, meaning I go all the way around, and then add a 60, it'll give me the same value. Here in quadrant 2, I go all the way around and it'll generate the same value. So these are the equations that we're looking for. Now, these equations are only going to work when n is an integer. So I need to make sure that I include that when n is an integer. So that's number one. Look at number two. If you want to try it, pause the video, work it out, and then push play. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start by trying to solve, trying to isolate the cosine. I'm going to subtract 14 cosine of x to this side, and I need to add 7 to that side. So when I subtract 14 cosine, I get 4 cosine of x. If I add 7 over here, I'm going to get 2. I could divide by 4 and get 1 half. So now I have to figure out the angle that's going to work. Cosine is 1 half. So when is the cosine positive 1 half? Cosine is positive. I could be in quadrant 1. 
cosine is positive, I could be in quadrant four. Maybe we should review that all students take calculus. Quadrant one, everything is positive. Quadrant two, the sine. Quadrant three, the tangent is positive. Quadrant four, the cosine is positive. That's why I'm going to draw that one here, quadrant four. Quadrant one. The cosine is adjacent hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse. This angle here is rad 3, or this side is rad 3, which means that this angle here is 60. Giving that angle in radian measure is pi over 3. And because we're looking for all solutions, this I need to add 2 pi n. The angle in quadrant 4. The, so, the cosine is adjacent hypotenuse, which means that this angle here, this reference angle, is going to be the same angle as that one. Six, the reference angle, keep that in mind. The actual angle that I need, that I'm looking for, is that one right there. That angle right there is 300. And so that angle you need to convert to radian measure. And doing a quick calculation, that should come out to be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. This will only work when the n is an integer. Make sure you include that little extra thing in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to move on. Number next one. Number C right here. So that is sine squared. We'll deal with that in a bit. Add 1. Divide by 4. Again, I added 1 and I divided by 4. In order to solve this, I need to take the square root of both sides. Square root of both sides. So I am taking the square root of both sides. I do get square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. Now, remembering a little flashback from algebra, taking the square root of an equation, I do need to include a plus or minus. So now, this is going to get a bit weird here. I'm going to separate this. I have sine of x equal to 1 half. I have sine of x equal to negative 1 half. With that in mind, I have to start drawing triangles. The sine of x equal 1 half, positive 1 half. I am in quadrant 1, quadrant 2. The sine of x is equal to negative 1 half, negative. The sine is negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So think about what's going to happen here. I need to figure out the sine being a positive 1 half. I'm going to draw two triangles, one in quadrant 1, one in quadrant 2. The sine is negative 1 half. I'm going to draw it in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4. And don't freak out. The angle or the reference angles are all going to be the same. So here, quadrant 1. The sine is positive 1 half. Opposite hypotenuse. This angle is 30. In quadrant 1, x has to equal to pi over 6. In quadrant 2, the reference angle will be 30 again. 
opposite hypotenuse. The reference angle 30 tells me the angle is 150 degrees. So when you're in quadrant 2, it's 5 pi over 6, so that's 2 pi n. Quadrant 3. Opposite hypotenuse. The reference again is 30. The actual angle is 210. Well, 210 gives me the measure of 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. When you're in quadrant 4, The angle is 330 degrees. This is the radian measure. So for this example, there are four different equations that we need to write. This came from quadrant one. That came from quadrant two. This one came from quadrant three. And this one came from quadrant four. Four different equations. We have one more to do. There goes the next one. Rad 3 cotangent of x plus 4 equal 3. So again, pause, solve for the cotangent, and then come back. Okay, so you subtracted 4 divided by rad 3. So we'll have the cotangent of x equal to negative 1 over rad 3. Now, because that's a cotangent, I kind of like to deal with only a tangent. So if I know the cotangent of x is that, I know that the tangent of x is the reciprocal. And the reciprocal is negative rad 3 over 1. So let's talk about that. Tangent is negative. Think about the quadrants. And so the tangent is negative, can be quadrant 3, and it could be quadrant 4. Ooh, Robles. Wait, 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 that's not correct. I hope you caught it. The tangent is negative. We're talking quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. Okay. So what is the angle in quadrant 2? The tangent is opposite, adjacent, this is negative. The reference angle is 60, the angle is 120. When you're in quadrant 4, the reference angle will also be 60 which means that the angle is 300. So when I write this in quadrant two, changing that to radian measure, when I'm in quadrant four, changing that to radian measure, now don't forget, I need to find all solutions. So when I'm asking you to find all solutions, I need to add something here. And you're right, you're adding pi n. And this only works when n is an integer. Normally in class, I kind of pause and let you figure out what I did or what I did wrong and figure out what happened, what's the difference. Well, I hope you can tell there's a difference between this one and the rest that we did. Here, I'm only adding one pi. I'm only adding one pi. And we're only adding one pi because we're talking about a tangent. 
the tangent does not have a period of 2 pi. The tangent has a period of 1 pi. And because the tangent has a period of 1 pi, you're only adding 1 pi in, and not 2 pi. So again, sine, cosine, we add 2 pi in. Tangent, we're only going to add 1 pi in. All right. So keep the purple paper in front of you. I'm going to give you homework. This is only the first part of this section. I will do another video for the second part of this section. Your homework is from the book, page 331, 1 through 11 up. All right, guys, I will see you. Mañana.